Hi everybody, thanks for taking a moment to watch our last one from Blue Wave Soaps. A little bit different voice for this one. I don't usually do these, but uh, decided I'd give it a little bit of a shot myself. So in this video, you're going to see me making just some very basic uh, pink, baby pink, baby blue soaps. Our thought was to make soaps that would make nice gifts for baby showers and announcements and gender reveals and those kinds of things. So from a design aspect of it, you just gotta kinda get the colors right. And after that, it, the rest of this is really kind of easy. One of the things I'd like to point out here, if you look at the solution that I'm making and I'm just pouring in the, the coconut oil and the melted shea butter, with the rest of the oils is uh, get a, take a note of the, the actual color of the oil because as this process goes on you'll see how that changes and becomes what you see in the final product for the soap which I always get really a uh, great amount of pleasure from I think that's really just kind of neat to watch so uh, so that was the oils here comes the lie that everyone who makes soap uh, really makes a big deal out of how dangerous it is I do have gloves on eye protection and so on. Pour the lye into the oils and immediately the chemical reaction that you hear about that is saponification begins to start. So obviously this is sped up a little bit as I'm doing a lot of hand stirring. Pretty soon we'll get the stick blender in and then you'll really see the color change. As it changes it lightens into a nice creamy yellow color. Not, not quite the industrial mustard yellow color <laughs> rubber raincoat of the gloves um, but uh, you'll see here in a moment when the stick blender there we there she goes the stick blender goes in some pulses with that and already you can see those blooms of kind of creamy soap batter goodness there A little bit of a glare from the overhead light, but I think that's okay. And it's usually just such a better idea to pulse the blender than it is to do kind of a continuous mix. I went into a little bit of a slower motion here just because I think it looks great. So satisfying. You generally want to blend until all the oil that you would see floating on the surface has been incorporated so you don't have any floating oil and everything has been emulsified and mixed together. And you get to what a lot of people refer to as a trace. Some folks have a hard time knowing what they're looking at. Do I see this? Is this... This is the trace that I want. Uh, here, this ends up being blended to um, between, I'd say, a light and a medium trace. The batter is still pretty watery, but you'll see when I drizzle it off the spoon how those little ribbons stay on the surface. Yeah, that's a good trace. That's a light to medium trace. So I'll be making two uh, one pound loaves here. So therefore two containers to split the main batch into roughly two equal parts. It's pretty easy to eyeball. Now, if you've never made soap before, you might see that uh, the consistency, the thickness, the viscosity here, it's starting to thicken up a little bit. I didn't put any fragrances in this soap here, so uh, it's not going to thicken too badly. Uh, the, I only used two different colors. The mic is here, that voodoo red for the, the pink color and the Aphrodite blue for the, uh, the blue color soap. If you'd like to see how they actually end up, stay till the end of the video and there's a little uh, stop motion animation that we made as kind of an outro or a closer for our videos. And it's made with the results of the blue batch here, or some of the blue batch. Now this bag of white 
stuff that I'm dribbling in there is just a little bit of oil mixed with some food grade titanium dioxide. Uh, food grade, but you know, obviously don't eat the soap. My third arm comes in to help me out by mixing up some blue mica, incorporating it in a little bit of an oil off camera. So there's some pink that uh, was mixed up off camera. It's just such a brilliant, beautiful color when you first pour it out. Now that's not what I was going for for the soap. I really kind of wanted a soft pastel or very, very pleasing pink to the soap. And so as it gets mixed in, of course, it's going to dilute and, and get to a lighter pink color. That pink mixed with the titanium dioxide, the white colors there, uh, is one or two aspects of the color of the final soap, um, but there's some other variables also. So obviously the, the batter being kind of a yellow color will um, affect your final outcome as well. And a lot of these batters and these soaps and these colors, as they saponify and as they cure over time, which basically means letting all the lye combine with the fats of the oils to turn into that soap uh, compound. And then as the water inside the bar evaporates over the course of weeks, um, the colors do change. So what you see on day one or on mix-up is, is not always what you're going to see later on when the soap is ready to use. All of our soaps are cured at a minimum of six weeks, and the reason for that is that uh, a f fully cured bar like that, um, it's just it's going to make a harder bar. It's going to be nicer to use. It will last longer, and uh, there's no danger at that point of any um, unsaponified lye or anything like that. So, if you decide to buy a bar from somewhere that says please do not use before a certain date um, I would you know it's it's risky but I would at least follow their directions if not tack on extra time to that just to ensure that it's a fully cured bar and you're getting your your maximum use out of it so there you see me mixing that up and that's uh, pretty close to the shade of pink that I wanted uh, and then it ends up being and here comes that brilliant blue it's almost pearlescent such a great color. You may wonder, well, why don't you make bars of soap that are that blue or that look like that? And you know, you can get pretty close to that. The, the issue is that if you dump so much of the, the mica pigments in there to, to get just that super saturated color uh, in your bars of soap, you do run the risk of having that bar then when you use it in the in, in the shower to wash your hands or what have you of creating lather that's uh, not the color bubbles and lather that you would expect it's it's not so cool that it's like look neon blue bubbles or anything like that it just it, you just got to be careful there's always the outside possibility depending on which micas you use that uh, it could stain a washcloth and those kinds of things so no, no chance of that here but uh Overusing micas can lead to issues like that, and that's, that's why at Blue Wave Soap we tend to go with uh, micas that, that will not do that for you. So you see, I mix the blue in with the yellow. Yellow and blue make what color? So at this point, it's not particularly pleasing. It's it's kind of got a greenish tinge to it. Uh, so obviously, it needs a little bit more of the blue. So we get to. Watch that delicious pour of the blue back in there again. Just love the way that stuff looks. And of course, you you know you add bits at a time. Uh, this little drop is great. You add bits at a time because of the old saying about you can always add more, but you can't take it away once it's there. So. Um, and this, this soap batter, as I mentioned before, has no fragrances or other things that would cause it to thicken up faster than you would want to. It's called acceleration. There's nothing here that would accelerate the, the soap to make it clumpy 
or anything like that. I'm still able to get a nice creamy uh, consistency. Uh, when we get to the pouring stage, you're going to see I wouldn't want it too much thicker than that. When it's too thick, you run the risk of getting big air pockets in the in the loaf. So when you go to cut your bars out of the loaf, just like cutting slices of bread, but you don't really want air bubbles in your bars of soap if you can help it. So right there, that's a nice baby blue shade. Uh, it looks a little bit green. Within a day or two, the green had pretty much gone away and it got to a nice pleasing blue color. So again, uh, my other two hands were in there helping. This is, as I mentioned before, kind of a one pound one pound loaf, it's, everything's, you know, imprecise when it comes to this stuff. It sort of depends on how full you fill it and, and all those things. With ours, we'll fill it pretty close to the top. I'm not doing any special designs, no special texture on the top or anything. And you can see it's a little thicker here. Um, it's still fairly watery once it's all poured out. do a little thing with a spatula on the top surface there and it does a pretty good job smoothing it out. Here we go with the spoon instead of the spatula but just kind of give it a little jiggle like that and you can see how it just likes to smooth itself out. Now there's still going to be a little bit of the texture you're never going to get it um, flat like uh, you know still water or anything like that if uh, you would need that with your bar you would have to cut the bar in a straight line to make that surface but in this we're pretty much up to the top it's about as full as I wanted I'll move this one off to the side and then pour the pink one That's just a piece of parchment paper underneath there as just nice not to have to worry about putting anything that might be a little caustic or anything from the lie down onto the desktop. The parchment paper takes care of that for us. Um, so again, this has been sitting a little bit longer, it's just slightly thicker, but it's a, a very nice pleasing shade of pink there. So I think uh, as a baby shower, you know, I, in my head I was thinking, wow, you know, it'd be really kind of neat to to make little centerpieces for the table or something like that. They would include not a full bar of soap, but uh, like little pink cubes or little blue cubes or however you would like it. I just think that would be something that would be kind of unique and, and, and nice. So uh, possibly when we uh, post pictures of this up on bluewavesoap.com, we'll maybe include a picture of a little centerpiece that we made or, or something like that using some of the bars. And like I said, the, the outro that's coming up here in about a minute or so, uh, you'll see the little blue cubes that we cut out of the blue bar um, to as kind of the final result. I think some of those with some ribbon and uh, you know, some accent pieces or, or what have you could really make a nice centerpiece for a table or be included as a part of a gift bag or something like that. Just seems like a nice touch. So there we go. Thank you. I, I hope you like it and have a great day.